Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. This is me Mr. P and this is another episode in a Proxmox home server series. In this video I'll show you how we can set up Ubuntu Cloud in a template inside the Proxmox and how we can use that template to create a virtual machine. The virtual machine that you will create will, your, will already have your username, a password, a SSH key and all the updates. So let's begin. If you're not aware, Cloudinit is industry standard multi-distribution method for cross-platform cloud instant installations. During boot, Cloudinit identifies the cloud it is running on, in our case it's going to be Proxmox, and initializes the system accordingly. Cloud instances will automatically be provisioned during the first boot with networking, storage, SSH key, packages, and various other system aspects already configured. So in this video, we're going to use Ubuntu Cloud in it, but please note the Debian as well provides you the image that you can download and use that image to create the Debian Cloud in it setup. So let's start. First of all, let's go and download which, uh, let's download the Ubuntu Cloud in it file. In the description, you will find the link to this page, which will take you to Ubuntu Cloud images. So let's pick the version of the Ubuntu that we want to use for the setup. I'm going to choose the 2204 Jellyfin. Click on here. Then I will click on a current and inside this list of all the files, we need to find the one we need. And in my case, it's going to be this. It's a cloud image amd64.img file and this is QCOW UEFI GPT bootable disk. I will right click on this link and choose copy link address. Inside the Proxmox, I need to navigate to a storage unit where I keep my ISO files. Yours might be different, so please choose the location where you store ISO files. And once you click on ISO images, click download from URL, paste URL in the first box and click query URL. This will query the URL you just pasted and it will present your file that you are about to download. Here we go. So it went and fetched that this URL will download this file. You can rename this file if you want here, but in my case, I'm going to leave a default name and click download. So right now Proxmox going and fetching this file for me. So I'll wait for this file to be downloaded. Download logs telling me the task. Okay, so that means it's fine. So here we go. This is the file we downloaded. It says that it's ISO file, which technically is not correct. This is this is actually the disk image, the actual disk image that we're going to attach to the virtual machine we're about to create. I just like to keep all these things in one place under ISO images. I will click on a create VM and now ID number is fine. I can I will leave as 100. You can choose whatever ID number you want. Under name, I'm going to say Ubuntu, Ubuntu dash cloud init template. You can name this as one as you want. Under OS, I will choose do not use any media. We're not going to use any CD-ROM or ISO files. System, everything can be leave by default. Under disks, I will remove the SCSI zero as we're going to attach the disk that we just downloaded. Under CPU, I'll give the, this VM two cores. Memory, two gigabytes of RAM is fine. Networks, everything leave by default. Configuration, I will leave everything, like check everything is fine. I will leave this unticked because we need to do a couple of more things to this virtual machine. I will click finish. So Proxmos right now creating a virtual machine for me. Under logs, I can see that it's created. So in a second, this icon will change. Let's wait for this icon to change. And here we go. Virtual machine has been created. Next, we need to attach the driver which has downloaded or disk image to this virtual machine. I will click on a Proxmox node and shell. I need to navigate to the file where to navigate to a folder where that file is. In your case, you probably have the attached storage where you keep all your ISO files. So your, yours is going to be located inside the mount and then followed by the folder that you created. As I'm using the local storage for this demo, it's going to be a slightly different path for me to follow. So let's actually make this a bit more space here. So command to attach the drive or co the command to attach the hard drive to the virtual machine is as follows. QM import disk one word followed by ID number of the VM that you are about to use for this. In my case is 100. And now I need to put the full path to this file. Like I said, in my case, it's going to be different. So it's going to be bar lib bz templates, templates, sorry, ISO, and the name of the file. So this is where the file that downloaded locates, followed by space and name of the folder or name of the storage unit that I'm going to use for this drive to be uh, stored in. In my case, it's going to be local. 
so I need to put here local. If you're using, for example, ZFS, you put ZFS name. If you're using NFS, you put NFS name. In my case, it's just going to be local space. And now I'm going to put dash dash format QCOW2. I'm doing format QCOW2 because QCOW2 format allows me to create the snapshots of this virtual machine. By default, it's going to be imported as a raw disk image, which will not allow you to create the snapshots. I like snapshots there. You can think them about as they inside the games, a quick save. I just quickly run a snapshot, go inside the VM, mess it up. I do a quick real roll back and within like less than a minute, I'm back to as it was before messing up. So this is how I'm going to run. So I'm instructing QM to import disk to 100 VM, ID number 100. This is the disk that you need to use. This is the place you need to store. And this is a format I want you to use. Enter. And now Proxmox going and pushing this drive or cloning this drive and inserting into this virtual machine. So let's wait for this to finish. And here we are, last line, successful imported disk as unused zero. If I click on this virtual machine and click on the hardware, this is a drive that we just added. I will double click and click add. And now the drive is assigned to this virtual machine. To make sure that the drive will be used during a boot process, I'm going to click on options. Under boot order, I'll double click and I'll tick this and then tick those. So it means that go and just use that or I can drag all the way to the top. Leaving like this or leaving like this makes no difference. It's going to do the exactly same thing. Okay. And now the disk has been attached. Next thing, we need to sort out the cloud in it. There's an option here for cloud init. If you click now, you will get the error. No cloud in drive found, no cloud init drive found. You need to click on the hardware, add cloud init drive, and choose the location where the cloud init will be stored. It's a very small file, so you can choose whatever, wherever you want. And that's it. Cloud init has been added, as you can see here. So right now, this VM is ready to receive the configurations. I'll click on a cloud init. And in here, I can specify user, password, DNS domain, and server, SSH key. Do I want to update packages automatically? And the how IP address will be assigned. So let's start. Username, I will obviously put this, Mr. P. Okay. Password, double click on that and enter the password. If I want, I can specify the different DNS server and domain for this VM, or just leave by default, which it says use host settings. SSH key, I suggest to add SSH key. There is a way for you to just log into this VM via username and a password via SSH, but it's, it was working for me, but suddenly stopped, so I started to use SSH key always. So I'm just gonna go to a different screen, paste my SSH, okay, and you go Pasca at NUC. Upgrade packages, I leave by default as yes, and under config, if I'm gonna double click on that, I'm gonna say, IPv4, I want DHCP to assign the IP address. Click OK. That's it. This virtual machine is set up. If I will press the start, this virtual machine will start. All this will be applied automatically. And uh, all these will be applied automatically and I will be able ready to use. But what if in the future, let's say I want to slightly change this. I want to slightly change username or maybe my SSH key will change this. So it's better right now before you starting this virtual machine for the very first time. We need to do what we intended to do in the first place is to create the template. I'm going to right click on that and choose convert to template. Click yes. And Proxmox right now converting this virtual machine into a template. Icon change right now is representing as a template. And now I can use this to create the virtual machines. So let's say I don't want right now this next virtual machine to have the Mr. P as a user. So I'm going to right click and oh, sorry, first let me change this to Mr. P, let's say Dex. Okay. Regenerate image. That's it. Right click, clone to 101. Yes, I'm going to do full. Mode full this means that this virtual machine that we're about to clone into 101 will be detached from the template. If we'll leave linked, that means that 101 VM will be attached to the template. And if in the future I want to remove this template, I will have to remove all the virtual machines that are attached to this template. So as always, just choose full. There is a small chance of like there is a small amount of storage saved if you're going to do linked because most of the files will be located in a template and the I'm just going to piggyback them from there. But in my case, full is much better. I'm going to click close or clone 
and right now Proxmox cloning virtual machine for me as you can see with the username Dex I'm gonna click on this I'm gonna say Dex I do want to change that back to Mr. P for the template if I click on this there's this Dex and username let's say I'm gonna change that from something else let's say subscribe is gonna be username regenerate image image regenerated so subscribe is gonna be a user the password here hasn't changed and now I'm gonna click on a console and I'm gonna start this virtual machine for the very first time so during the first initial boot the cloud init drive will be used to generate the user the password will I create the DHCP record to obtain the IP address the my public SSH key will be used and the packages will be updated and upgraded automatically in the background you will notice that if you're gonna do straight away the apt, apt update and apt upgrade straight away after this VM starts as you will get the error that the apt upgrade process is already being in used so let's wait for this to start usually this starts about 10 seconds to 15 seconds for initial setup depending on how many resources you assign to this virtual machine in my case two gigabytes of ram and two cores and here we are we have very long name copy of vm ubuntu two, two, two. so subscribe was the user and a password and i'm in so if i'm going to do apt update sudo apt update is working but there is a big chance that if i'm going to write run apt upgrade it will tell me that as you can see we can't get that in because the file process well the the, the process is locked by id 171794 and to do that if i'm going to go in here and put f3 and say apt here we go this is the one that's keep popping in and, and in and out and other ones somewhere here hiding which does an upgrade and update and here we go we, in, we have the ubuntu virtual machine created using the template in the future let's say if you want to create a more more ones you just use this template right click clone choose which one you want let's say it's going to be one two three I'm not sure if you let's do ABC and once that is created before initial process you can, you can go inside cloud init file and change the configuration here as you want and that's it this is how you set up cloud init for Ubuntu I'm not sure if I mentioned but Debian does exactly the same thing with their um, images there is a Debian cloud init images as well available link to that I'll leave in the description for you in the description below the like button for you to go and check it out anyway I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.